For our deep dish dough, I have all the ingredients you see here on screen here, starting with about 10 ounces of all-purpose flour, about six ounces of warm water, uh, about two ounces of corn oil, as well as uh, 0.2 ounces of sugar and salt, and about uh, 0.1 ounces of active dry yeast. So I'm gonna go ahead and combine these all together, starting with the, uh, the uh, yeast into the warm water to get that activated initially. Stir it in, get it activated, and let it proof for five to 10 minutes. Now with the uh, yeast been proofed here, let's go ahead and add, well, let's go ahead and pour that in. I add my flour, the oil, and the salt sugar. All right, let's get it in the stand mixer. Put the dough hook attachment on, fire it up and knead it for, for a few minutes at least. Let's go ahead and mush it up into a ball here, fold it a few times, curl it up into a nice little round here, and we'll let it rise covered in some plastic wrap off to the side for a few hours. Now every so often, you want to take the plastic wrap off when it doubles in size, punch it back down, pop all the air bubbles out, fold it back up, and roll it back into the ball again. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of flour here, a little flour on top to keep the plastic wrap from sticking and put the plastic wrap back on and let it double in size again. And then it'll be ready to cut probably. For my cheese, I prefer to use a blend, uh, usually a mixture of hard and soft cheeses put together. So off to the left here, I have a hard cheese in the form of Romano. I sometimes use a brick of Parmesan instead, but I, it's, it's usually one or the other. And I blend the hard cheese with, uh, with a soft cheese. Uh, so here I have two soft cheeses. The middle one is Scamorza. It's, uh, I guess you can call it similar to mozzarella, but it, I think it's a little bit uh, less watery and uh, better suited for, for putting on a topping for like pizzas. It even says here cheese for pizza, huh? So uh, there you go. Uh, also, another option I like to use a lot especially for my thin crust, is Fontina. This is a nice soft cheese that blends well with the hard cheese. I'll always choose to use Fontina for my thin crusts, but since I'm doing a deep dish today, I'm probably going to save this for a thin crust pizza that I'm making alongside my deep dish. And for my deep dish, I'm gonna go ahead and blend my Scamorza, my soft cheese, with my hard Romano cheese. I didn't use the entire block of any one of these cheeses. For a single pizza like I'm doing here, Roughly about four to five ounces of each is, 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 is plenty. So it's about four ounces or, or so of the hard cheese, about four to five ounces worth of, of my Scamorza soft cheese. And that's what I want to use for this one pizza. My topping of choice for today for this deep dish pizza is going to be spinach, because in my opinion, there's nothing better out there in pizza land than a nice Chicago deep dish with spinach in it. So I got about three ounces of baby leaf spinach here. I'm going to throw several cloves of minced garlic in there. And I'm going to add some salt. Like that. And I'm going to coat it in some olive oil. Just like that. And I'm going to stir it all together. Just toss it together so it all mixes together. And the goal is to coat all the leaves with uh, at least a tiny bit of oil and salt. So they start to uh, sort of wilt over the next hour or two before I make this pizza. Just like that. Now it's time to get started on making our sauce for our deep dish pizza. My deep dish pizza sauce is more of a chunky style, uh, a little different than my thin crust sauce, which was more, uh, more smooth, homogenous, and sweet. This is going to be somewhat chunky and full of herb flavor. As yeah, so you can see here, I have a can, a one-quart jar of my uh, Kamado roasted 
fire roasted tomatoes that I did uh, probably last summer. Uh, they're almost, uh, I mean, almost 10, 11 months old now. I did a video on how to do this, so if you're interested in making your own, go check that out. I also have some salt here and some black pepper, sweet onion, two to three Roma tomatoes, four to five garlic cloves, a couple bay leaves, a few sticks of uh, oregano, and a, and a little palm full, full of basil leaves here. I'll put the actual recipe and quantities um, in the video description down below just so you have all that, but I uh, just want to give you a visual of what I'm combining here. Dice chopped and minced everything up here, as you can see. Uh, chopped onions, chopped uh, tomatoes, minced garlic, and, uh, and diced up uh, herbs. Let's go put them all in a pan and cook them up. I got my pan over a nice uh, medium hot fire. I'm gonna put some olive oil in the bottom here. I'm gonna saute the onions first. Stir them all up together, get, a, get the oil coated on, on all the little pieces there. And I'm going to go ahead and let that thing, uh, let them sweat down to the point where they're kind of golden and soft. Okay, it's been a, close to 10 minutes. They've softened up really good. They're starting to smell really fragrant and they're starting to, um, starting to caramelize a little bit, which is not my really intent. My intent was to get some of the sugars and sweetness out of these onions to come forward and soften them up, which I think I've achieved. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add my garlic. Let that cook for uh, 30 seconds or so, just to get the rawness out of the garlic. Boy, boy does that smell good, that garlic smell. All right, I'm gonna uh, throw my chopped tomatoes in. Stir them all in there. Mix them all up. Gonna let that cook now for several minutes too. All right, I'm back. So it's cooked on pretty well. As you can see, the tomatoes softened up real good and everything's sort of almost becoming almost like a mush basically. So everything's been softened and cooked down. I'm gonna go ahead and add my roasted tomatoes. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw my herbs and my bay leaves. And I'm gonna stir all that in, get it all mixed up. My recipe calls for about a half teaspoon of black pepper. Well, I'm just gonna eyeball this, folks. I'm just gonna go ahead and just crush it in there. You can always add more later. as well as a teaspoon of salt. However, I'm not quite sure if I need a whole teaspoon of salt because I can my tomatoes sometimes with a little salt in them for as a preservative. So I am going to let this cook through a little bit, taste it, and then add salt if necessary. It's getting close to a boil here. I'm gonna go ahead and get me a little sample here. A little, just a little taste. Yeah. It's a little bland, it could use some salt, but beware that the cheese has a lot of salt in it and you tend to use a lot of cheese in a deep dish pizza. Plus, uh, the, if you're putting pepperoni and sausage, there's salt on that and some of your ingredients have salt in them. I put salt in my spinach, for example, right? So all I'm gonna do is put maybe, what, it's probably about a half a teaspoon of salt in here, not my whole teaspoon. And I'll adjust later, if not, only if necessary, but you don't want it to be a strong salt flavor uh, here because it'll just the salt will add up in your mouth when you bite into that pizza and you're not going to like it So just keep that in mind Now it's up to a boil I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit and stir this thing and my goal is to simmer it now until uh, This whole pot thickens up to the point where I can pick up the sauce on my spoon and, and not have it slide off like it does uh, This is way too thin of a sauce for a pizza sauce of any kind in my opinion let alone a deep dish. It's got to be nice and thick. So I'm going to let this reduce over the next, I don't know, half hour or, or longer, depending on how long it takes. 
Now, if I was in a hurry, in a, in a real pinch, I've done this before many times actually, is that I would take a six ounce can of t tomato paste and dump it in here and stir it in to, to, to thicken it up even quicker. Uh, I'm not in such a hurry right now and I'm gonna let this reduce naturally. All right, let's go ahead and uh, stir this in. Check it one more time. I've been checking on it off camera for a little while now, probably a good 25 minutes or more. Uh, so let's uh, let's see here. Yep, there we go. See how it sort of just sort of tacks to the spoon a little bit there. That's good. And plus, it'll thicken up even more as it as it cools down. So I'm going to turn off the heat and take this off the heat and let it cool. I'm out at my Kamado Joe here with my uh, fire bowl filled with natural lump charcoal and I have a star square down below. I'm gonna fire that up and get this thing heated up. In the meantime, while it heats up, I'm gonna throw on my accessory rack and my heat deflectors. The main rack. Now I could put my, my pizza uh, right up on here on the main rack. However, I have found it to work better by raising the pizza higher up into the dome. So what I have now is my extender rack, just like this on here. So I can get the height of the grill up much higher and uh, actually get this thing separated further from the heat down below. So the crust doesn't burn and the cheese and the toppings can melt appropriately without burning the bottom of the pizza. What I have here is my 12 inch deep dish pizza pan. It is made out of aluminum and it's been used many times in both the oven and on the grill. And what I want to do here is go ahead and give it a nice little light coating of oil and brush it on. And on the sides too. been about an hour and a half since I first applied the olive oil and salt to this thing and you see it's wilted pretty good I was hoping for a bit more but it'll continue wilting all the way through the time I make the dough and, and lay out the ingredients and put it on the oven or, or on the Kamado so uh, I'm not worried this is looking pretty good if you were in a real hurry though you can actually just saute this down in a pan on your stove with a little oil and salt in about five minutes it doesn't take much I just uh, not really encouraged to want to saute spinach. I'm not lazy, just figured I had time on my side and let, my, and let, and let time help me do this without the extra work of having to saute spinach. And uh, this, is, this works fine. Now it's time to lay out our dough. So I have here off to the side is my deep dish ball of dough. Not to be mistaken for the one next to it off camera, which is for the thin crust for the kids. I've also done a video on the thin crust dough and thin crust pizza. Uh, I have several videos actually of different components of making the dough, the sauce, the cheese, and putting it all, all together on, on your grill. So go check out my pizza playlist on my channel for that. In the meantime, let's go ahead and flatten this out. A little flour to keep it from sticking. A little flour on the hands too. And just work it out. You can use a rolling pin uh, if you'd like. I do, I do that many times too and probably will at some stage along this process to speed things up, but you don't need to. If, it's, if the dough is really well hydrated, it'll, it'll pull and give easily. I've even uh, spun these, you know, uh, where you spin it over your head, you know, like that basically. <laughs> just stretch it out. I've done that time, many times over as well, but I'm trying to do this on camera and uh, just do it this way instead. So my goal is to make this all fit in this pan here. So let's see what I got here. That's almost there. Stretch it some more. That looks pretty good. Yeah. All right. So let's pick this up. Bring the bring this over here. Drop this in, and I uh, may have over mis mismatched it a little bit here, but the trick is to pull it to the sides. I'm trying to do this with the camera off to one side is a little tricky, but 
It's all right. All right, so now, that, so now the trick is to get it to stick up against the side wall so you can kind of stretch it towards the wall if it's not already reaching the wall and pull it up the wall or push it up against the wall to get it to stay up against the wall a little higher. Press it against like that a little bit. I'm kind of doing this in a fast manner here because I'm trying to get this done on video quickly, but sometimes if I really want it to look nice, I'll take some time and do it real nice and slow and pull it out, stretch it towards the wall, just like that. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. So we had some cheese from both your hard and dry um, bowls. You can mix them together. That's what I normally do. But since I was doing this video, trying to show a distinction between the hard and soft cheeses, I um, have them in separate bowls currently. So, but it'd just be easier to stir them all together before you do this. There we go. That's plenty of cheese. Time to add the spinach. Along with the garlic that's still in here. Okay. I also have some olives. Throw in some olives. Some spinach and black olive deep dish. That's what my wife and I like to order a lot from the, or make a lot as we are here from the local pizza joints. So, there we go. Okay. Now it's time for the sauce. Okay, there we go. And sometimes uh, a little uh, grated Parmesan cheese on top is a nice, nice touch. Put it on there now. So when the grill's at about 425, I'm gonna put this thing on, which is what it's at right now. So I'm gonna burp my grill, open it all the way up. And you can see, surprise, I have a new uh, toy, a Kamado Joe pizza stone. I don't normally use a stone on my grill. I haven't needed one for years, but figured what the heck, why not, right? So. I'm going to put this pan right on top of the stone. You don't need the stone for this, but I have it. I'm doing a thin crust pizza after this for the kids, and I want the stone for that preheated. So it's, it's just an extra accessory right now. Close up the lid. And I'll let it cook for uh, probably, uh, well, we'll find out, huh? It's been 35 minutes. Let's take a look here. Okay, well, that's looking pretty good, but the crust doesn't seem like it's done. See, still, yeah, crust isn't quite ready yet, folks. So let's come back in another few more minutes. Okay, folks, um, it's been 45 long minutes, and I think this is now finally ready to eat. I could let it go on a bit longer, but it looks pretty done on the sides. It could be a little bit more crispy than this, but it's okay. I'm not going to complain. I think the issue was... Um, this stone I just put on the preheat for my thin crust pizza after this, uh, at this uh, some sort of insulator to keep the uh, crust from doing the normal cooking time. Because this, this should only take about 35 minutes and it's been 45 minutes. So I think this ten, the 10 minute loss was due to this plate. But it's good enough, it's done. Let's go ahead and get this thing off. There we go folks. The crust looks pretty good. Nice and crumbly there. Get the layers of cheese and spinach. And olives in there mixed in. Mm. All right, well, there you go, folks. That's how you do it. I'm going to eat this pizza. I'm going to enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, etc., etc. Want to hear from you. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.